Hello, I'm Leo Waldock for Kit Guru TV and today I'm looking at the CPU cooler inside your PC. Um, we're starting with a standard Intel cooler on this Core i7 PC and then I'm going to be changing to an aftermarket Noctua cooler. When I built this Core i7 PC, I slapped in a standard Intel cooler. It's a really basic piece of hardware, however it works, it does a reasonable job, but it doesn't do a brilliant job, and I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. Right, now you may not be able to read these figures, but at the moment, using CPU ID hardware monitor, the core temperature of our Core i7 processor is 34 degrees, 32 degrees, 33 degrees, and 35 degrees. So give or take, we're running at 34 or 35 Celsius uh, on a pleasantly warm day. Um, I'm now going to start Prime 95 running, uh, and that's gonna stress the processor massively. We'll be able to see that on a system monitor. And here we go. So now we have all eight cores of the processor are running at 100% and the processor temperature is starting to go up and we're already up to 80 degrees Celsius and climbing. And if I shut up for a moment, you're gonna hear the fan getting noisier. Now it's not unbearable, but the noise has gone up as the fan spins up and the temperature's climbing 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, seems to be stabilizing at 89 so oh, no 90 flashing there 91 and this task has been running for 30 seconds and now the package is up to 92 93 celsius 94 95 not sure whether we're going to hit 100 or not but we're getting blooming close 96 97 98 99 is it going to do it or not it looks like it's still oh, there we go 100 celsius just momentarily there and let's shut that down and that is a standard Intel CPU cooler at work okay so this is a close-up of me installing a Noctua cooler inside this Core i7 PC first step is to remove the standard Intel cooler unplug the fan header unlock the four posts pull them back pull out the cooler. Now then we can see that the center of the cooler is copper and it has some white thermal paste on it and the body is aluminium and that's why you shouldn't really use kitchen towel because if you're not very careful you'll get bits of paper torn off. Um, and then we can see that on the uh, processor the uh, thermal grease is in a circular pattern uh, exactly as you'd expect as the center of the cooler is circular and we wipe that off a bit more carefully this time and there we go um, right I'm gonna install the base of the Noctua cooler and then we'll discuss thermal compound so let's pop the case upright have the side panel off and turn to the back where we put on the bracket goes in like so Hold it in place with a finger as I lay the case down. Reach over here for my bits and pieces, and I'll drop on these spaces. Then I put in place the two brackets where they're going to actually mount the body of the cooler. And I hold the whole assembly in place with these thumb nuts. One, two, as they tighten up I can let go and then three four and let's do those up with my screwdriver one two three four working in a cross pattern and then just nip them up the last fraction of a turn You'll notice that these two brackets each have a little stud. The stud engages with the body of the cooler, so I can mount it in this orientation 
if I wanted, not that I do, I could have put the brackets the other way around and have the cooler like that. But I don't want air fighting with the back of my graphics card, so this is how I want it. Right, then we apply some thermal compound. I'm using Noctua's own thermal compound. It's always best to use the compound that comes with your cooler because you can guarantee it's going to be compatible with the, uh, the plating that they use on the base of the cooler. I think Noctua uses nickel. Um, but you can guarantee that their compound is going to be correct. Next question is how much do we use? Um, I'm going to use a bead or a small blob in the center of the processor and I'm aiming for about five odd millimeters in diameter. doesn't sound like very much. Uh, as a guide I'm aiming for the same size as one of these capacitors. I'm not going to spread it out. I'm not going to do it in an X shape. I'm not doing it in a line. I want it in a blob and then the body of the cooler is going to um, sort that out for me when it locks down and squishes the compound. And I'll put the cooler into place. And I use the Noctua supplied screwdriver just to put the one screw on a couple of turns and I come to the other side and I lock the second screw in place. There it goes. Now I work evenly. The nasty graunchy noise you can hear is the sound of the springs that Noctua uses under its fasteners to ensure that the tension is correct. It sounds a bit horrible, but it's absolutely fine. And the reason I'm using a Noctua screwdriver is it's very long and it's longer than the body, which means I've got access to the screws. So that's that. Now I reach for the Noctua fan. I connect the header and then I pop these two spring clips in place and there we have it an aftermarket cooler installed in our Core i7 PC if you recall the standard Intel cooler gave us an idle temperature on the Windows desktop of 38 to 40 Celsius uh, looking here at the Noctua we have a temperature of 28 Celsius so that's 10 to 12 degrees cooler just running on the Windows desktop which is a pretty significant difference. And that's basically uh, half the difference between ambient temperature and the Intel cooler. That's impressive going. Now let's click on Prime 95, get the processors, the processor cores loaded up to 100% and see how we do on the CPU temperature. And it's climbed immediately to 65, 66, 67 Celsius. And it has hit 68, dropping back again. So it's basically leveled out very swiftly, 63, 69. So it's oscillating a little. Uh, but we are in the mid 60s, where the standard cooler gave us a temperature, a massive temperature of 100 Celsius. So here we have a temperature 36, 35, 36 degrees Celsius lower. That is an epic difference, and it just goes to show how a decent aftermarket cooler is going to help your CPU to live longer and to perform better. So there we have it, proof that a decent aftermarket cooler is a far better bet than a standard CPU cooler and also I think a demonstration that applying the thermal compound can be really straightforward without any fuss. This is Leo Waldock for KitGuru TV.